Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our um, APS Leaders Institute's Measuring Outcomes Booster Session. Um, thank you so much for, for coming on back um, for some more practice and more Mary and Marion. Can never have too much Mary and Marion. So um, my name is Krista Brown. I'm the e APS Leaders uh, Institute Program Coordinator with uh, APS Workforce Innovations at the Academy. I'm here with Rabaz Taha, our Operations Coordinator and uh, Tech Support Queen. Um, so we will be moderating and tech supporting today. And we um, are also joined by our colleague, um, the, the, that needs no introduction, Lori Della Grammaticus from uh, NAPSA, the, the great education or executive director. So she'll be helping out as well. So, um, before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much to Marion, uh, Marion Lou, and Mary Toomey for for coming on back for the booster. And um, I will hand it on over to them um, in just a second. We have to do a little bit of um, housekeeping here. Um, if you haven't done so already, um, go ahead and, and place your name, title, county, and um, any questions you may have from the April twenty first. Uh, workshop in the uh, chat box and um, we will go ahead and field those for you. Um, I'm just going to go very quickly through the, our slides that we know very well um, and go ahead and hit on Zoom. I know all of us know Zoom very well at this point too, but if you don't, um, please you know, give us a shout out. We'll be using um, the chat, we'll be using breakout group, um, and I don't think we have any polls today. If you do need to step away, please go ahead and give us a BRB, um, be right back, and a back, um, and that helps with us um, planning for our small breakout groups. So orientation to today. So we are going to go right into um, Mary's going to do a bit of a review and then talk about some national outcome studies. We're going to spend quite a bit of time in small breakout groups practicing um, using the outputs to outcomes matrix. Um, and we're going to do it for some uh, around something that is very um, fresh and new, which is the ACL um, APS uh, COVID monies that first that first round. So that'll be fun. Um, you all received a participant manual um, via email. And if for some reason you didn't see that or you don't have it handy, um, Rabas will go ahead and put a link to the chat box. You will go ahead and, and use that for um, the breakout group. Also it's fillable PDF. You can take notes and, and all, all good things in that. Um, Let's see what else we will have time at the end for some some feedback um, and a uh, end of day survey and post test and then we'll talk a little bit about our last workshop and booster of uh, 2021 which is uh, data um, and there's some a fun pre work assignment that goes with that so we will go ahead and um, take a little time to talk about that because that is something a little different. Um, and I think at this point, Mary, um, I'm going to hand it on over to you and let me know when you want um, me to change your slides. Okay, we can stay right here for now. Hi, everyone. It's nice to see your faces, see your names again. I'm really happy to be here with all of you today. Um, full disclosure, I have spent the last 10 days moving. Uh, so I'm just like, like if you, I, I don't know, I'm just a little crazy, a little um, uh, sleep deprived. So yeah. if at any point I make no sense whatsoever, first of all, how would you tell this was different from any other day? And uh, second, just, you know, somebody, somebody <laughs> do the virtual equivalent of like, wake up, Mary, like focus, girl. So anyway, in the event that some of you weren't with us when last we met, um, we wanted to just do a tiny bit of a refresher. So we can go to the next slide now, Krista. Um, you know, what we, what we talked about as the sort of one of the, my favorite examples about the difference between outputs and outcomes and why there is a birthday cake on this slide is that I think this is just a really relatable example um, and way to talk about the difference between outputs and outcomes 
uh, which is the story of the mother who um, goes to the bakery and buys a birthday cake for her child's fifth birthday. Um, you, we, we then talked about, well, what is, what is, and then they have a birthday party. And so what is an output and what is an outcome? Um, and the birthday cake is an output from that story. And we're going to talk about the, what is the outcome uh, in just a second. So, you know, outputs, the thing I think that's true about outputs is they're really easy to count. Like if you're counting something, it's not that it couldn't be an outcome, but most likely, or, or it should warn you that you're probably an output. So outputs are the actions or items that are a means to your outcome. So they're a means to achieving um, the end. So when we think about the, um, the birthday, the other kinds of outputs could be presents. They could be balloons. And we're going to talk about, so you put together a birthday cake and balloons and presents. What do you think was the outcome that the mother had in mind? Um, but since we're not all just about birthdays here today, though, that sounds really good right now. <laughs> I could use this. I could use a cake, piece of cake. But when we think about APS outputs, some of the things that come to mind are the number of investigations that are initiated on, by a certain day, or just the number of investigations that are done in any period of time. The number of services that clients are referred to, the number of services clients uh, that are provided to clients. Um, so the number of MDT meetings convened, the meeting of the MDT is, is not the goal. The meeting is a means to an end. And we discussed some other ones. So let's turn to outcomes. And so the reason that there is a little child on this uh, slide is because the goal of the birthday party was a, is a happy child. Um, I mean, no parent sits, sits down and says, I'm going to have a birthday party because I want my child to feel loved, um, because I want my child to feel appreciated. I think, you know, we just put together birthday parties, but that is the outcome. You, if you were ever a child who didn't get a birthday party, the opposite of not getting a birthday party, the outcome is to feel sad and to feel not seen and to feel not valued. So again, we don't articulate these things in our day-to-day -day lives, but the, the outcome is of, of the birthday party was a happy child. Um, I think I had written down that another outcome might, we didn't talk about this last time, we talked about the outcome could be a frazzled mother, though um, that isn't, again, probably a goal that she had in mind. But like, uh, to, if you wanted your child to be better behaved, you know, you might set some outputs, like if you, if you want that, whatever kids want nowadays, if you want that frozen to video, you have to be, a, you know, I will get that, the, I will give you this output, but the outcome is I want you to be better behaved. So outcomes are what you know we want or need to achieve. Um, it's all about goals. So you know when you're getting new money, like all of you are uh, from the CARES Act money or the other money, any other money that you get, you know the first thing we're having to think about what are we hoping to achieve with this money? And the thing about APS is that we have several levels of outcomes that we think have to think about. And I've come more and more to think of these things as totally interrelated. So, you know, a lot, I think a lot of times we're very, very concerned and as we should be about um, program outcomes. I think there's a lot of pressure that's put on all of you to, um, to like to reduce rates of uh, recidivism, um, which, you know, things like that, which is a program outcome. Um, and of course, we're thinking about client outcomes and maybe not so much about worker outcomes, but worker outcomes, like a, a well-trained workforce, a workforce that feels um, effective, a workforce that feels um, competent is probably going to creep into better outcomes for clients and better outcomes for program. So the that we're going to talk about these three levels of outcomes, or we did and we will uh, today I'll talk about how there are these three levels, but I think um, that they are connected. And I think that's, that's just an important point I wanted to make. So next slide, please. 
And of course, throughout the throughout today, if you have a question, um, do whatever Krista says <laughs> in order to just put it in the chat. Krista will read it to us. Um, but I I get I'm really happy to be able to share with all of you a, more information um, about some outcomes studies that are ongoing. Mary, I'm going to talk about the new additions study. Um, and Marion is going to talk about what's going on with Montana and the WRMA um, predictive analytics. So I'm going to talk about new additions now, and then Marion's going to talk about Montana and WRMA a little bit after when we after we break into small groups. Um, I think we can go to the next slide. Sorry, mine's, mine is moving slowly. Um, so just a little bit about APS outcome, client outcome studies in general. Uh, Marian reviewed a bunch of them when last we met. And I think you got the impression, um, which was correct, that a lot of them were very small studies, either a small sample or they were restricted to a one part of the country, like, um, there's a very famous one that was done in um, Cleveland years ago, but it was just Cleveland. And so because of those um, different restrictions in the studies, ACL wanted to fund a study that was more national in scope, um, that was looking at client outcomes. Um, and these are the client outcomes that we were looking, that we wanted, they wanted to look at uh, client safety risk, client well-being client satisfaction. So we ended up creating a technical expert panel to advise us to advise new additions and I'm consulting with new additions um, to, to advise the research team on how to do this best, how to do it in a way that would not like put a huge burden on APS workers or other APS staff, wouldn't put a huge burden on the client. Obviously you need to keep all the client information de-identified, we're not getting any client information. So how did, how did we do this? And how do we get like a large end? So our sample size is for 6,000 um, client data forms and 2,000 client questionnaires, which I'll talk about in a second. So how do we get a big study de-identified multiple regions, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just happy just to say that uh, Lori is on that, um, was on the technical expert panel as was Marion, as was Carol Dayton from the NAPSA research committee, and then a bunch of um, APS, other APS folks and APS researchers. And um, again, the funding does come from the Office of Elder Justice. Nine states were selected randomly. Um, only one state uh, of the first nine that were selected randomly, only one state declined because they're already participating in research. Um, I can tell you California is not one of the states that's involved, but the, and I cannot tell you who the other nine are. Then within those nine states, we were also looking for three, just three counties per state. And those counties were selected randomly on the basis of um, population. So a large urban county, a suburban county, and a rural frontier county. So again, trying to make this as representative as possible. Um, but, and if anybody has questions when we're done about whatever, any, any questions at all, I'd be happy to answer you, except I can't tell you who the nine states are. Pa because, you know, when we talk about outcomes, it gets a little close to home. It's sort of like asking somebody about their age or their weight. Well, like, you know, like, how are you guys doing? And we wanted to make sure the states didn't feel um, like they had to put their, like what, that they would not feel bad or what am I trying to say? Um, that there would be, that there wouldn't be comparisons between, you know, these two, state A and state B and look how much you know, these clients loved their state APS, but these clients, eh, they weren't quite so, or there were some who were, you know, maybe not so positive. Um, so none of the states will be identified in any of the reports. Okay, next slide. So how, you ask, do we get information from clients and information about clients? Um, and there were two, two ways. The first one is a, the APS worker at case closure fills out a client data form. It has just 15 questions and they're doing this, they're filling it out on SurveyMonkey. Um, so this is just a sampling. It asks 
So we can get a, a little bit of a snapshot without any identifying information of the client. We're getting gender, race, relationship to perpetrator, what kind of maltreatment, you know, could be every kind of maltreatment includes self-neglect. You know, where were they living at case opening? Where are they living at case closure? The level of client engagement. So, you know, if you have um, a very resistant client, a somewhat resistant client, a fully participant, a somewhat participatory, you know, fully participatory clients. So that will help us parse this information later when we get um, the next piece, which is uh, on the next slide. One of the things a technical expert panel told us is that you're, if you're doing a client outcome study, you need to talk to the client. <laughs> so how do we talk to clients in a study that's of this scope? Um, so what we did uh, was to create a client questionnaire and this client questionnaire is mailed to the client or in the rare cases that APS is in, in homes now um, because of COVID, but some states are um, reopening and doing in person. So they could hand this to the client with a self-addressed stamped envelope that returns this, to, this form to um, new additions. So the client fills out uh, seven questions. Um, and you see them here. I'll just read them. But when I first encountered, and then this is this is um, this is tailored to the county. So let's say it was um, Cook County, which is Chicago, Illinois, like Cook County, Illinois, which says when I first encountered encountered Cook County Adult Protective Services, I thought I needed their help. Um, yes or no? Um, I helped decide what type of help I received. And now we're on a Likert scale from one to five. I felt the worker respected my wishes. Um, I received all the services I needed. I'm satisfied with the help I received. I feel safer because of the help I received. I feel like my life is better because of the help I received. So again, just to, to remind you that the three outcomes that we wanted to look at were um, self-determination. So that's where I helped decide what time, type of help I received. I felt the worker respected my wishes. Um, safety risk. So um, number six, and well-being. So all of these will come back to new additions. Um, they have, we have a way, which I won't go into too much detail, but we have a way to connect this questionnaire with the, the data form that the worker has filled out. So we can see, um, you know, what type of abuse. So we might be, you might be interested in knowing to do clients um, who were physically abused feel less safe um, a case closure than clients who were neglected, for example. So anyway, let's go to the next slide. Well, actually, can we stay on this slide? And I'll, of course. Um, yeah, and I'll tell a little bit about what Montana and WMA are doing. Um, so very briefly, just so everyone knows, you know, there are other ongoing studies in Montana. What they are doing is that they adopted this client questionnaire um, um, questions. So we asked approval from Mary as well as, uh, you know, the team uh, from New Additions in order to use this questionnaire in Montana. So what Montana is trying to do is they're trying to capture client outcomes using these surveys, but also at the same time, if you're, you know, at the, this training last time, two weeks ago, um, I talked about the uh, identification services and outcomes matrix that um, have been um, used in San Francisco, Napa, Tehama, and I am more than happy to say that we just trained um, Carol's Ferris County yesterday. So we're gonna be having four counties using the ISO matrix. Um, in Montana, they're also using the ISO matrix. They started using it um, more than, a little bit more than about a year ago. Um, so in addition to capturing client outcomes, they're also trying to capture kind of, you know, on from the caseworkers perspective, how are things going so that they can triangulate um, those two different sources of information. Um, additionally, on the national side of things, um, WMA have been um, looking at like big data uh, using machine learning, um, gathering all different counties and states information and trying to identify risk factors associated with maltreatment and trying to predict uh, what are the clients, you know, who are the clients that might come back. Um, I would say that, you know, at the county levels, you know, in your APS programs, that might be a little bit ambitious to try to achieve. Um, so, uh, well, at today's training, obviously, we're not going to go into details and in discussing those. I just wanted to mention, so you know that those are some of the ongoing um, studies that's um, happening. All right, back to you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. 
yeah, it was exciting to get the request to from Montana to use this client questionnaire. There, there are uh, a few programs, uh, APS programs around the country that I'm aware of that do um, client questionnaires, you know, a few weeks after case closure. Um, one study that Marion talked about last time was a small study in, I believe, Harris County, Houston, Texas. And, um, you know, I, I understand that people are kind of afraid to hear from the client. Um, and that's why we were asking in the APS, uh, in the new edition study, like how resistant was the client? Uh, if the client was like, get off my front porch, like, you know, and then they actually get the questionnaire and actually take the time to answer it. Um, if they are very negative about APS, we're, we're correlating that or connecting that back to they were they were a really resistant client. But but that study, Marianne, that you talked about, it had very high. I mean, I think I think this, all the studies that I'm aware of, um, the fears I think that some APS programs feel like, why would we want to get client input, are not um, they, they have not proven to be ne you know largely negative at all. If I think it was like 75 percent people said that they had a very good experience with APS. Yep. That's so, fair. and in the end, like this is this is the sort of the beginning of the conversation, Marion, about the elephant. Um, you know, why do outcomes? Um, evaluation at all? Why look at outcomes? Um, well, it's partly because, you know, we say we're, we say this is what the aim of the program is. Um, so Krista, what's the goal of the APS WI? It has, a, you have a great mission statement. It's like bringing, changing minds and hearts and something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and I, I'm going to be ashamed of myself. I can't say it verbatim. Maybe Rabaz can. Um, but yes, it, it's it okay. is. It's, okay. it's like changing. Uh, yeah. Changing hearts, minds. And I want to well, say creating environments, you know, creating yeah. environments where. Yeah. So, I mean, so like the output for you guys would be how many <clears throat> trainings, how many people were trained and then. But but if you really have as your goal that you're changing minds or hearts, then hearts you know we need to figure out a way to, to ask people, did you, you know, how was your heart changed? How was your mind changed? Um, because that's what you said you were gonna do. And the same with APS. If we say what we're gonna do is help people uh, reduce risk, if that's your program goal, how will you do that? And we're gonna talk about the money that you all are getting from ACL. I guess, you know, we're telling folks at ACL, this is what we're gonna do with the money and how to kind of give thought to how we're gonna, we said we're gonna do this, how are we gonna say whether we actually did it or not? Um, so let's go to the next slide because that's kind of where we, where the rubber hits the road in terms of what we wanted to do today. Right, so this is just our example of a filled out outputs to outcomes matrix. Um, Right, so everybody remembers this from last time. And, you know, um, I don't know, I was thinking about this, like maybe we should just like reverse it all and like, um, you should start with, um, yeah, I think you, you start with the question, what is it that you want to be able to say to ACL, how this money changed something, whether it was for the worker, um, again, related to uh, their effectiveness, their efficiency, their confidence, their retention. Um, what, what do you wanna to say to ACL? Well, we used our money to get mobile, I'm making this up, but mobile stuff so our workforce could be more mobile. It was more um, facile for them. Um, if, if you, so how will you be able to tell ACL that that's what you did, so looking at those asking those questions and then how would you how would you do it if you go to the far right column what would be the mechanism that you would have to do so my I think um, you know so like we talked last time about the extended case management system the one of the goals would be that the clients returned to uh, like a program goal would be that the clients returned less often to the program um, a client outcome would probably be that the clients said that they had greater satisfaction um, because they had 
they had been really cared for in this case management uh, extended services. Um, and I think I can only imagine that workers in a program like an extended case management, extended um, service, that the workers also felt that they were being more effective. So we're first looking at what level of outcome, worker, client, or program, and then looking at what do you want to be able to say to someone that actually changed? Not that we referred the client to more services, but that the client reported a greater sense of well being or the client reported a greater level of safety. So we're saying we're going to do this, and then this is now the this. This matrix is a, an attempt to sort of give you the step-by-step -step to be able three months, six months, a year down the road, tell whomever you have to tell, in this case, ACL, um, when, we, when we start talking about the ACL money, um, how, how are you gonna measure this? All right, we can go to the next slide and I'm gonna turn it over to Krista. All right, and I will invite Marion and Mary and Lori to jump in as well, because this was a little brainstorm um, activity. So what we thought as practice would be really how to measure the benefits of this ACL APS COVID funding um, and how to link the funding to outcomes um, to improvement. So like Mary said, either on the system or pro pro programmatic, the client or the worker level. So we're going to be randomly assigning you to groups and the groups represent essentially the 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 um, the uh, buckets that the counties got to choose to um, to submit their proposals um, for. Um, so we have housing and care transitions, uh, supplementing food and transportation to appointments, public health um, and or scams. That's how it was combined. I, I don't know if I quite agree with it, but that's that's what we got. Um, technology needs uh, either for uh, staff or clients, extended case management or just improving APS processes during COVID. Um, so let me go through this next slide and then we're going to open it up for any questions before we pop pop you in um, to your, your groups. So you're going to be um, broken into small groups randomly. Um, you're going to use your outputs. Heidi, I was just checking. Oops. Heidi. Oh, thanks for muting. <laughs> you're going to use your um, outputs outcomes matrix, which is in your participant manual. Um, and, you know, Mary said you could start with the you can start with the questions or um, you basically asking yourself what do you want to measure at the end and this could be what you are actually going to do in your own county or it could be a fictitious practice because you're in the group and you're not that's not where you're gonna you know put your energy and your monies um, so so what do you want to measure at the end what do you want to see changed what are the questions identify the mechanisms for collecting that information, and then how would you apply it in your county? Um, and if you can't, what else do you need and what is missing? And so we'll we'll process that um, at, in a larger group format. So please be ready to designate someone from the group to report back. Um, and you'll have uh, probably about 20, we're gonna give you a good 20 minutes to do this, and then we'll have lots of time for questions and processing. Um, but before we do that, are there any questions on what we are asking you to get into your groups and discuss? Anything that's not clear? Um, you can always raise your hand once you're in the group. Uh, Rabaz has put the questions in the chat box. Anything not clear? 